the thing that really stands out to me is just like they have so much going on like the big three and mm. i think combined with the underrated sets that coach budenholzer sets up and just like being able to get his guys moving and buying into the system i i don't know am i going too far to start off by saying that this might be the most diverse offense in the league in terms of like they can throw pretty much any kind of offense at you and they're going to do it at least above average no matter what well, that's an interesting philosoph- – I mean, not the first time you've raised an interesting philosophical question. Would you rather have a handful of brown belts or a black belt or two? Because I don't think the Bucks can give you any form of offense that is like, this is one of the best two or three forms of this offense. But I think they can give you good offense in a, in a variety of different ways. Um, and I'm thinking the way they use Giannis as a role man, five out – Chris Middleton kind of sets. Um, I, I, I want to push back on that one thing. I think one thing that they do at a top tier level is transition. Because oh, yeah, Giannis, that's true. Yep. Yeah. Giannis is probably the best transition player in the league right now. Yep. I'm sorry. I was only thinking of half court. That's that's a great point. Continue. Giannis and uh, Giannis in transition is scary. Yeah, he's absolutely ridiculous. The amount of possessions he gets is like overshadowing pretty much everyone. And he's a foul drawing machine there. But I think the other thing is, is you know, they, they have multiple of these wrinkles. I'm thinking of this one set where like it's an out of bounds play. And Chris Middleton gets it. And the first option is he runs off this double stagger baseline. And it's like, oh, we have Chris Middleton coming off a double stagger. Him getting a catch and shoot in that situation. That right there is great offense. But that's covered pretty well. You know what the backup plan was? A pick and roll with Drew Holiday and Giannis Antetokounmpo. Giannis ends up, drives into the post, kicks it out, and the possession ends with Drew Holiday posting up. I I think there's maybe one defender weak side there, so he has a lot of space to operate in the post, and he easily rises up and hit a post fadeaway. Okay, so even if you stifle pretty much any action that they have, Chris Middleton, top-tier bad shot maker, Drew Holiday, underrated post-up mid-range guy, and I mean, Mm -hmm. this guy is just on fire from from mid-range this season i think the the post-up game of his isn't a mirage at all i think maybe the the long mid-range stuff is a little bit is a little bit of an illusion but that post game is, is incredible so even when it gets bogged down you have these couple of options that's like well didn't work out chris drew go do something and having that final option i think makes them particularly dangerous at this point i think they've struggled a little in the past to blend all those things together on one possession like you just diagrammed right and I th- and we should talk more about Drew in a second because he's been amazing. But I think the more you can find sort of organic flowing offensive sets like that that can take advantage of um, Giannis attacking space or Giannis getting downhill as a roll man, the spacing and shooting around them with ball handlers who can kick out and make decision decisions. Chris Middleton um, in that like pinch post, mid post game, going to his office or using him as one of the guys who can come off. I like all that little middle handoff action they get into sometimes where you can have Drew or Chris playing kind of two man action with Giannis and you can hit him on the roll or you have to respect those guys on the drive and the mid range pull up or you have to respect those guys from three point shooting because they're both really good three point shooters. Drew Holiday specifically has improved his three-point shooting over the years. He's now actually, I think he's like 41% on wide-open threes. He's 38% on pull-up threes. Both of those are over the last three seasons. So I like anything this, this year that can kind of connect the strengths of those three players in a consecutive set organically and and leverage the sort of big three offensive options with the role players all at the same time versus like, oh, on this possession, every everyone kind of clear out, we're going to isolate Middleton because that's what we need to do. 100. This is, this is something that I've been calling for for a couple of years because I think the Bucks offense is worst when they start being like, all right, Giannis, we actually want you to be LeBron light. Like we're going to space out right, five yep. out offense. Giannis, you're going to make something out of it. Maybe we'll get some drive and kick action because I think that's what Budenholzer really likes. That's what he was running with the Hawks a lot is like get into the paint, drive, kick, drive, kick, drive, kick. Something is open. And I actually, that's that's the offense that makes me the the most frustrated when when the Bucks do this because I think Giannis still has a, a poor propensity to take his little pull-up jumpers. I would love for him to cut that fat out of his game. But the best is when he kind of takes on more of a, more of like a bam roll, 
versus more of a, of a LeBron role. Like him, top of the key, setting a bunch of screens, doing a bunch of DHOs, letting Chris and Drew run around. Pretty much everyone else that's on the court with him, Bobby Portis included, even Brooke Lopez now that he's back, everyone else is going to be able to space out and shoot threes. And then Giannis rim run, running. Like, once you have all this mo motion going on and you have the paint wide open, Giannis might be the best lob finisher in the league right now. Like, if he's, if he's not, he's absolutely top tier 99th percentile in that specific skill. I really like this version we're describing now. And, and just to put some numbers on this, Drew Holiday, as of, as of today or yesterday, whenever, whenever this is updated, um, the Bucks' offensive rating with him on the court this season is 120.5. So we are in elite territory, and we always talk about looking at it with the kind of big three indicators on the floor. Um, yeah, it's, it's been really good. Let me, let me add a little bit more uh, Drew Holiday numbers there. And I know Zach Lowe and Marcus Johnson were just talking about this on the low post. Shout out Marcus Johnson. Like Marcus Bucks Johnson's legend. great. Marcus Johnson is a great po play caller. He's a great podcaster. He's a great player. We, we all need to respect Marcus Johnson more. He's Anyway, what I was saying about the low post is Zach Lowe. I, I think this is a direct response to me. So, Zach, thank you so much for responding. This is actually my response to you. And he was like, people get really excited when you just look at the all three of the big three are on the court numbers, which I think I cited, like, the last episode. Let me, let me go a step further, right? So, when the big three, when Giannis, Holiday, and Middleton are all on the court, the relative offensive rating is, like, plus 11, which I think puts you right around, like, 122 offensive rating. You take Giannis out of that equation – their offense actually improves a shade. It improves a shade. It's still hovering around that 122. If you have Giannis and Holiday on the court together with Middleton off, their offense is still better yet, right? It's like plus 11.47. So we have like 122, no matter what combination of Holiday and the other one of the big three you have. And then even if Giannis and Middleton are off the court together, uh, their, their offense is like just about plus one, right? Like it's not great, but it's still not sinking. Like Holiday is still able to keep them above water a little bit. And here's what Holiday is averaging in those minutes without the other two. He's averaging per 75, 31 and a half points with a true shooting that's plus four percentage points better than league average and nine and a half points of um, nine and a half assists per 75. All right. So Drew Holiday, like I've talked about this a lot. Uh, shiftability, Drew Holiday is tremendous at shifting role, right? Like he can slot in next to these other stars. He's great next to Middleton and Giannis. But when you start taking away those other offensive options, he becomes more of the focal point. He's able to ramp up his scoring and, and passing and efficiency enough that he can still buoy a solid offense. So I think that Drew Holiday offensively right now has been the true key of their success this season. I agree. I, I think... He's someone who I was lower on offensively in the past, and of course, uh, for a lot of the playoffs last season, really struggled with shot making and just overall, overall kind of offensive grooving um, as as they ground through that postseason championship run ultimately. But if you look at his time in Milwaukee, both last season and this season, he, as we've said, has shot the ball much better. His overall indicators, his uh, scoring efficiency, everything's kind of been up. And then this season he's been a little bit better than last season. Like I mentioned three point shooting numbers. Um, Cody alluded to it earlier. He's been really good in the mid range, short mid range. We talked about all his strengths. We talked about him as a passer. Uh, yeah. 20 points per 75 plus 3% relative true shooting compared to the league. His one number metrics look good. I mean, I think you are talking, I think if I had to pick a team today for the playoffs, I think the Bucks would have three of my top 20 picks. Thanks for listening. You can find the full episode of this Thinking Basketball podcast on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, or wherever you enjoy podcasts.